drawing it is if I'm looking from the top, the force of one side is going to push it up that way. The force of the other side is going to push it this way. So I'm going to get my rotation around it in that direction. And so for one loop, the torque, that's what this is. This is going to be torque. My torque is the strength of my magnetic field, the current, and this is area of my loop. So we've extended it out to be able to take care of the area of the loop. Which is going to be kind of nice because now I can do circular loops. I can do square loops. I can do rectangular loops. So those loops, that'll get it there. And if I want to expand it, because I can add them up, this is related to the number of loops that we get. So this kind of finishes off that problem that we were showing before. Now remember, this is gonna give you a motor. That's gonna give you a motor because what's gonna happen is this. So if we look at, we do this, we have our magnetic field. And we have our loop coming into our magnetic field. And we're, when we are applying a current, so this one has current applied. Our magnetic field is going to get this to turn. We're going to get a rotation. And my rotation can do work. So what we're doing is we're using current and wire on a small scale versus using the potential energy of water to turn. So if you think about, I think we did this, well, I don't know if you guys did it, but I always talk about when I define work, I take my own mill stream and my mill stream gets my water, my, my water wheel to move. And that's what's going to turn my shaft. And this is what created the industrial revolution. Once I got that shaft, I could do grinding. I could do milling. I could do all kinds of lovely things. Now, this allows us to do a variety of things now. Let's, do, let's look at this just a little bit, given our time today. We'll actually talk about functionality. So what you'll see, and let's see if I can actually draw it. You'll get something. So this will be connected to my wire. So I have a collet here that you can actually see. So it's kind of a collar that you have this band and what you'll have are little brushes on that band. So this is called a brush. And the brush will be some type of conductive material. It could be gold, it could be silver, it could be copper, it could be whatever. This collar is also made out of some conductive material. And if I'm doing a motor, I'm taking my current into that. It's gonna have now this, this collar here is solid except for a small gap. Because if I put, if I had it connecting, I'd short out the system because electricity is going to go through the shortest way. 
but I want the current to actually flow through the wire. So I actually have to have a gap. So there is a gap. And that's what's gonna allow the current to flow through my wire. So for my motor, that's what I have set up. And this is a DC motor and my DC motor is defined by the fact that my collar, if I have this lovely little collar here, is complete, that's around my device. Now what's gonna happen with an AC is you're gonna end up with your collar, you have a gap on both sides. So your collar kind of looks like this. You're still gonna have your brushes, but I got two gaps and that's what's gonna give me my AC. Now, what we're about to see is the big question. We know that electricity flowing through a wire generates a magnetic field. But what happens if I have a different way to mechanically move this wire, go ahead and do the water wheel situation, and I spin the wire, Am I going to get a current? And the answer is yes. So a magnetic field can generate a current. Current can generate a magnetic field. So I can do something with this same setup, but instead of having current go through it, use something mechanical, such as water, or steam or something along the way, and they will turn the loop and that will produce a generator. So my generator is using some form of work to spin the loop, which is gonna create the electric current, which is what I want. So think of a wind turbine the wind turbine is turning my wires and it's easier to turn. Now you can do it the other way too. You can turn the magnet, okay? You can turn the magnet, but we find out if we turn the magnet, that takes a lot of energy. We don't necessarily want to do that. So it's easier to move the wires, but you can move the magnets. So you can either spin the wires or you can spin the magnets, one or the other, but that's what's going to give you your generator. And again, the difference between my DC and my AC is how that collar or that pickup is going to be utilized. That's where my difference is. So you'll get you'll get a lot of cool things there. All right, that's rotational motion. We don't have to worry about that. Okay. So here are fun things that we like to do. We like to build systems that look like this. And again, a lot of times we're doing that just to show how things are happening because what we really wanna do is make devices. So I have a wire and we're gonna have a bar across this wire. This is a conductive bar. And this bar can move. In fact, we're going to move that bar with a velocity of 0 0.25 meters per second. We're going to have this gap between these two items as 0.25 meters. And we're going to put our magnetic field into the paper. The magnitude of our magnetic field is going to equal 2.5 Tesla. We want to build this system so that it will generate a 
0 0.5 amps, we need to know what R is going to be to allow us to do that. So force due to my magnetic field, is particularly if I'm perpendicular, okay, this is perpendicular, is going to be QVB. My EMF or my voltage, which is one of the reasons why we actually switched to E, because now we got Vs all over the place, is going to equal current times R. And my force due to my electric field is going to give me EQ. And in this system, the force due to the magnetic field has to equal the force due to the electric field. So I get QVB is equal to QE. Now I get BB is equal to E. And now you can clearly see the relationship between my magnetic field and my electric field. There's no reason it can't go both directions. So my change in potential or my change in big V is equal to E times the length for my bar. And I know it's been a couple of weeks since we did that. Okay. And you did that. But what I just described for generators that I get, if I'm able to move my wire inside my magnet, I'm going to generate a current. And so what we're going to see, and we'll play with this a little bit more on Friday, is there's my potential is going to equal, and we're gonna have something called magnetic flux. That's what this is. This is magnetic flux. And my magnetic flux is gonna change with respect to time. That's a little bit different than what we saw with, gal with electric flux. My electric flux was steady. My magnetic flux has this changing time element. I have to be moving my wire. I gotta be moving my wire. And if I do this, my magnetic flux is gonna look an awful lot like my electric flux. Remember my electric flux was E dot product with A. My magnetic flux is B dot product with A. Now, if I'm dealing with my areas of things, this lovely is going to become B A divided by the change in time. I can rewrite A as if I've got a square length times length times change in time. And I'm gonna get, this is B times my length times my velocity. And I'm gonna use a script V to, to, to designate velocity. This is velocity. That equals I R. So now if I'm solving for R, R is going to be B divided by the current length times my velocity. And now I can just plug in my numbers. 2.5.25 meters, 0.25 meters per second, all divided by the current that I want, which was 0.5 amps. And since I ran out of space, I will write it over here. This becomes 
three, one, two, five. This is also Faraday's law. And the levitating barbecue video shows it very, very well. Now, Faraday, great experimentalist, crap mathematician. He didn't do his mathematics. He was actually hired by the Royal Academy to set up experimental demonstrations. That's what Faraday did. Faraday, great experimentalist, crap mathematician. Conversely, Maxwell, great mathematician, not so hot on the experiment side. And some people have to have both. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there. We'll play with Faraday on Friday. But this is one of those classic problems, and I think you have homework problems that look like this, so I wanted to make sure that you'd seen one.